Yeah, welcome back to Career Build Series 2023. This is episode number 21. And so we are in a microcontroller. So I'm currently back with the seaplane and doing a microcontroller here, trying to set this up. So I'll quickly just update this and we'll show you where we're at. So I did a bunch of paint on there. I like the paint jobs looking good. Uh, engine to sell. I put on some exhaust there to start with, see how those work for me. Starting to bang together a microcontroller for each engine. I want to get them up and running. You know, generally the way I try to get these things going is I want the function of it, the actual operation, the running of the vehicle to get going as soon as possible to kind of see if I need to do any design changes. And so currently working on that by getting this engine up and running. So let's get back in the microcontroller and get working on there. And I'll show you some of the stuff I've worked on as well. So. Just kind of uh, adding all the things I need on this. So what do we have? Seat engine. I'm going to go ahead and add a p-value there because I know I'll eventually need to tune that. Number input p-value. All right, so let's kind of start putting this together. So I'm just going to do a property text. I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. You know, some people enjoy seeing this type of stuff. Some do not. So I figure uh, try to kind of bang through this a little bit faster this time. All right, p-value, starter, fuel, air, RPS, engine, seat. All right, so we have a single seat. This makes things a little bit easier. I don't have to do seat combiners and all that business. So I'm going to control a throttle. I'm trying to see, do I visually want to control a throttle? I don't know if I do or not. So let's just get this up and running and then we'll move from there. So generally what I'll do is I'll do an up-down counter and I will read the, which axis is it? That would be the four axis. So it would be read number four. That's going to be my up-down. Up-down is my throttle. So seat to four. That's going to be thresholds. One, one, and then... Uh, negative one, negative one, that essentially turns that into switches, that goes there, that goes there. And I'll double hook that up like so. So now we have our throttle, this is going to be set to 0 0.001. Going to be on, let's see, idle I want at 3 RPS, I'd say. Maybe I can go a little lower, but 3 RPS sounds pretty good. Let's go maximum, let's say 20. Might need that for takeoff. We can always play with that later. All right, good. So that's going there. I need a PID, as is good. All right, that goes there. And then I will do, as usual, I'm going to set it up so that it does AFR because this is a supercharged vehicle. All right, and then I need RPS to compare it to. So my set RPS versus what is actually being made. P-value is going to go here. All right, so that kind of sets that up to get the engine running. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to update this. We'll save the vehicle. All right, and I need to just find something with the p-value, so I'll just grab the tug that has it, or it has not the p-value, it has the stoichiometry information and formulas and whatnot, so that's all of this. So it's going to be nice having a new vehicle. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Diversify gameplay a little bit when I'm... You know, I don't want to get to the point where I'm kind of tired of using the tug and then I don't have another vehicle ready to go. So this is nice that it gets me right in there. Engine composites coming here. It's going to go to the three nodes there for air, fuel, and temperature. That's going to be air and fuel. Make sure those are in the correct order. They are always backwards. I always put them in there backwards somehow. I have a gift for it. Okay, and then we want to take the p-value. P-value is going to come down here. All right, good starter can go there. And then that's good there. All right, nice. And so to start with, I'm just going to run this off the seat, and then I can change it later. So I'm going to do composite read on off. 
this will be six. So we'll do it off the seat for seat control, and then I will change it to panels. I'm trying to get in the habit of not making the startup procedure too complicated until it is up and running well, because I get into the testing phase and I have to do a ton of stuff to get up and running. So let's go. And so we need to end. All right. So if the six is on, And the RPS is less than 2.2, .2, which is 2 will is when the uh, a diesel will stabilize. So 2.2, .2, we can always change that if that is not enough. And let's see where we're at here. That kind of has to stay there if I don't want to be messy, but whatever. All right, that's good there. All right, so there's our starter is plugged in what else do i need so i have a throttle i have that all set up i want to just get this engine up and running all right let's try it let's see if i can't crank this that engine over so i do need a keypad for the p value Yeah, we're on infinite electricity now, so we don't have to worry about plugging in electricity, RPS. So we're just going to run the front for right now. Fuel. That's air. Where did I put fuel? Fuel's uh, not plumbed yet either. So, okay, I need to plumb in my fuels. Let's do that. So fuel is going to come up this, this uh, pipe here. I don't think I'm fully plumbed in anyway, so I need to fully plumb that sucker. And yeah, I stopped there anyway. Okay, so I need to finish this. Don't want to do infinite fuel or anything that... Oh, I'm on symmetry here. Get symmetry off. I don't want to do infinite fuel because that screws up, like, that will screw up p-values and all that stuff. I want to kind of run it the way it's supposed to be run. All right, so I need to do a... Com a uh, combine the two tanks as well. There we go. Come on, stop flicking around there, guy. Could hold control, but I'm just not doing it. All right, then I want to, let's see, cut you here. So I don't need to go all the way over there. I just need to go to, I'm going to have to go all the way over there because I can't put a fuel uh, fluid, fluid port in there. I have to get all the way over there, so that works. Let's see. Okay, go like that. And then pipe, it just doesn't have to be an enclosed pipe, but you know, I'm going to do a T piece just because it, I think it does leave me a little bit more fuel. And then I want a fluid port, like so. Fluid port, like so. Okay, so that's going to drain from both tanks. I'm trying to just paint as I go so I'm not, I don't. Oh, come on, man. So I don't run into an issue where I'm having to, uh, what is going on here? What's my paint situation look like here? Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's done. All right, so this is going up here. And then I need to plumb this in, so I just left it like this so I'd see it. That actual will work right like that, so let's go like that. Okay. Go right there. There we go. Come on, give me the right one. There we go. Alright, so that's there. And then we'll take Modular fuel right here. Nice, nice. Pipe. Do my Pat branded yellow there. All 
Alright, so fuel is now plumbed. Okay, good. Now I can plumb it here. So there is fuel. Alright, good. What do we have here? Air is there. It's supercharged. as is good. Starters there. Hook up engine composite. I did not. Engine composite. Seat. All right, I think I have fuel in the tanks ready, pretty sure. All right, so I need P value to hook that up. I did, that's hooked there. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and we'll just label this. All right, let's go ahead and spawn this and uh, let's make sure infinite elec can stay on, fuel's off, good. All right, so let's just put in a p-value of 1 to start with here. Let's see if we can kick this over. Did it start? Oh, I didn't configure my seat either, so that needs to be configured. Seat needs to be up, down, 100% on reset. Throttle. All right. Sounded like it started, but oh, I have no clutch in there. That would uh, do it every day of the week. So no wonder it started up so easily too. All right, so let's go. I need to add a clutch on there. These are the things that I forget sometimes. I moved that, so I'm gonna have to friggin' fix it now because <laughs> I just want it to look right. Uh, output clutch. Okay. Clutch. So let's see. Up, down, counter. Uh, point zero, zero, was it two, zero, zero, two, five? I think it is. Enable. Nope. I don't need it that low here. That's good. Enabled. Zero to one. And I clutch this out for the start. Um, I might hard clutch this. I, bet, I think I'm gonna hard clutch this for now. Let's hard, at least hard clutch it for now. We'll make it a one. You know, sometimes I, you know, a, if it was a turbine, you wouldn't hard clutch it. You clutch after the turbine spins up, and because the turbine doesn't have a lot of torque, you'll actually stall out the turbine if you don't clutch it as it starts. A reciprocating, you can you can just hard clutch it like this. And so I'm just gonna hard clutch. I'm just going to put a, a solid value in that clutch because with a reciprocating engine, you can do that. A turbine, you want to uh, have it clutch up once the turbine is up and running. You'll actually see that with turboprops. The propeller will be stationary until the turbine is up and running. Then the propeller will automatically start to be clutched. And then the propeller actually starts to turn. Okay, let's go outside for this. There we go. I'm throttling up, seeing what it's doing. All right, so it is a couple things that are causing the issue now. I haven't geared this up, so generally for a reset like this, I'll do a nine to one. And then what else do I need to do here? Um, <laughs> curious why my my throttle's being a little slow here. So one negative one, that's good. This is probably I think too low. Yeah, that's definitely too low. I think I usually do like a a point one because that's going only to twenty. So that will work. That's better. And so what I want to do is I want to get the front engine done. And then I want to copy over the, the panel, ideally. I end up always trying to do this and never get it done. So they have to redo it. There we go. There we go. So we're throttled up. So it sounds like we're at the rev limiter already, which is fine. That's why it's revving up and down. So I'll tune that in later, the p-value that is running. 
So that's pretty good. That's up and running. Good, good, good. All right, so let's start working on... So I'm going to need to put in prop control at some point. I'll do that as well. Ideally, I would have two throttles, two props, and not really two mixtures, but we don't have any mixture in game. You know, unfortunately, like, I love the look of the, the top here, but the issue is with these 2x4s, I can't build in any of this, which is sucky. I'd love to put a, a nice throttle quadrant in, but I just can't really do it. Um, let's see. All right, so let's start getting working on... So I'll, what I'm going to try to do is we should be able to fly with one engine. And if we can get one engine up and running and I get this flying, I'll duplicate the panel once the panel is pretty close to done. So let's start getting a... Let's put a gyro in here. And I want to get flying. So I usually pretty much always start with no gyro and if the plane will fly well with no gyro you know you're in good shape and so that's what i'm going to do um, you know a lot of people they expect the gyro to fix all their airplane problems it's never going to fix all your problems and it might make it fly pretty okay but you're asking too much of it and then eventually you're going to give it a situation where it's like nope i can't fix your problems and so that's why it's important to have your center of gravity with your center of lift and you want to have all your control servers balanced properly and everything and so i show that in uh, uh aerodynamics tutorial you can look at that on the stormworks basics there so all right so i don't know why i put a one in there anyway but i did so let's go ahead um pitch is inverted okay roll so roll i'm rolling to the right so the starboard needs to be inverted all right so pitch needs to be inverted yeah okay so i know what needs inversion now the nice thing with these is i can just grab them and either rotate or press the key i tend to just rotate them because i i know they're gonna function exactly how i need them to there we go All right. Nice. So that is in. Let's double check the control surfaces. And we'll see if we can get a takeoff. I need to put a prop control on here. Okay. So let's test it. Pitch is correct. Roll is correct. Yaw is still correct. Okay, good. That is nice. No gyro to start with. All right. So I need prop control. And we should be good to rock and roll here. Once we get this, I want to get off the water. All right, so I'll show you the other thing I'm going to add here. This is not necessarily a trick, but um, let's go. So we want to go to collective. All right, so especially with these seaplanes. So you notice how the engines are way up high. And in a standard traditional airplane, they'd probably be under or on the wings. You want to get that center of thrust as close to the center of gravity. So if we look at where our center of gravity is, ideally you want the center of thrust, essentially the middle of the back of the propeller, the middle of the propeller essentially, right here. That's ideal. If it's here, it's going to push you st literally straight ahead. There's going to be no pitching moment. The issue is this. With seaplanes, you need to keep the propellers out of the water. You need to keep the salt out of the engine. All very important things. And so they often mount them up high. Well, what they do is they, they tilt the engine so that they're actually pointed diagonally up like this. You know, you could do that if you put in pivots, but it's, it's, it's a pain, it's ugly, it's not great. The better way to do it is you actually tilt the propeller. And so, let me see, if I give it a negative... Okay, that works. So as long as it's pointing down, we should be good. So what I'm going to do is the WS, which is my pitch, is going to actually go to the pitch on the propeller. And what that's going to do is that's going to make it so that when I try to pitch the aircraft, it's going to be as though it's pitching the propeller. And the reason why I do it this way is, so like, see, I'm pitching it now. So I'm just doing WS. You see, as the elevators come up and down, it's doing it. The reason I do it this way instead of setting a hard number is the more thrust you're producing, the more of a pitching moment, the more pitch you're going to need. 
I could make it throttle dependent, but I'd have to tune that in. So this is just kind of a quick and dirty way to do it. Let me check this, make sure that's working. Okay, that is. Let's go all the way down. All right, let's uh, put a one in here and start it up. See if I can't get a flight. I'm probably have some steering issues here to start with, but we'll uh, we'll figure that out. Okay. All right, so that's up and running. Let's start to gently adding a little bit of thrust, and then I'm just going to go to. I'm going to try like 10% here. I'm trying to clear these rocks. This isn't the best base to be trying to take off from, but... I really should put an RPS gauge in here if you can listen to it. You hear it's, it's revving up and down and up and down. That's better. Point one is usually what I do in these engines. So now, see, it's trying to push the nose up, but as I pull back, I can use the propeller to watch. If I let go, see how it's trying to swamp my nose? If I pull back, it's actually using the propeller. It's countering that center of thrust. It's fixing the center of thrust for me. And especially on the water with seaplanes, it's important to do this. Ah, uh, you suck. I jammed that in way too fast. See, the problem, too, you run into is as I try to pitch this, it's going to take away a lot of the energy of the engine. Because it's putting a lot of load on it to do that. All right, so let's go bring it back here. So the other thing I can do is this. So uh, let's try a quick, let's try a quick, uh, I have one over here. Let's do this. Let me try to do a quick something here. I, uh, let's see. So property, let's take in Number input tilt, number output prop pitch. Okay, let's do that. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a tilt sensor to keep me tilted. This way I'm not overdoing it. I'm probably going to need both engines running. What I'll do is I will get them both connected. You know, I'm just trying to figure out how much thrust I'm going to need here. All right, so the tilt will come in. It will give me prop pitch. I'm going to do a PID. I do this a bunch of different ways with different builds. So I'll do it like this. We'll just do a 1. 1 should be fine for p-value. Constant on signal. Keep the PID running. All right. And then tilt sensor will go there. I want a 0 pitch tilt. And then that will use the prop to maintain that. This will just be for takeoff too. I'm gonna I'll have to fix it later, but um, stick a tilt sensor in there for now. Just trying to get this. I just want to get off the water, and so I'm just gonna kind of play with this until I get off the water here. And then that is pitch there. All right, I need an RPS gauge, so let's go ahead take off symmetry. Let's delete that. Let's grab a dial. So I also need to steer, and what I'm actually going to use is the roll function on the prop to do that. It's going to pull me left or right, because in real life you would use a rudder in the water. In game, they don't have enough effectiveness, so what am I doing here? Let's go into RPS there, and so what I'm going to do is my, my yaw is going to be the roll for now, just to help me steer this when it's on the water. All this, uh, I'll make this all more complicated and a little bit better where on the water it will take some of these things in effect, and when you're off the water it doesn't do it, so it's not doing it in the air. 
All right, so I, you know, I need that RPS dial or else I can't really tune the p-value in and I don't know if I'm getting enough power because of that, so. Okay, so let's go, I think I had 0.1 in there last time. Let's go six. Okay. All right, let's go up to like, I don't know, 8.8 .8 there. Let's start steering. So now notice how I can easily steer by using the roll function on that propeller. So that is giving me more realistic steering because you'd have a rudder in the water. Also, in one thing that's not taken into consideration in game that happens in real life is so, if you look at the prop wash, the propellers are going to be blowing fast moving air straight back over my tail and right over my rudder. And the rudder is going to redirect that thrust just like a boat's rudder would. So, you know, often if, like, say the engines were on the wings and they weren't blowing directly on the tail, I wouldn't get that extra effectiveness from the air moving over, from the fluid moving over the rudder. Same thing with a boat, you know, you need to power up a boat to actually get it to turn effectively for you. So let me do, often it's like around, let's say, 20% is maximum pitch effectiveness. So that is backwards, good to know. Okay, so this is backwards, so that's going to try to dive me into the ocean. It w you know what would be nice on these PIDs? If they have a little checkbox or something that would be invert results. Because often it's going to spit out inverted results. And so it would be nice just to have a checkbox. You don't have to put the extra logic in there. Just make it a little bit easier. All right. so. Let's go to like 15. Oh no, it wasn't, it wasn't inverted. It's just not doing enough. All right, it was not inverted. Nice, that's good to know. Let's go 10 on here. All right. I don't want to see the that's the issue with using a PID for that is I have to tune it in. And I initially I, you know ultimately I don't want that system in there, but I just need to be able to see if I can take off because I need to know again functionality wise am I going to be able to even take this off with this much power. And then I have to say okay, well I need to power my engines up more, I need to do things like um unrestrict the exhaust. So see how it's it's stalling. That's because this PVL is too low, so let's do 1.8. Okay, so see, now I'm asking of a 2.2. That's too high. Let's try one. Oh, that's why. 0.18. Come on. So see how this is keeping it dropping? As long as this maintains what I'm asking, which 3 is what I've asked of it, so that's a little low. So let's do 0.25. So let's do, I don't know, 0.4. Let's try 0.5. All right, so I've asked three of this. That's pretty good. We're in good shape there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go uh, just under 20. Often about 20, I tend to make my aircraft so about 20% prop pitch is max speed. And what that effectively does for me is that allows me to, when I go more prop, just like in real life, it will give me greater efficiency. And, you know, if you want ultimate speed, you know, that's, there are other ways to do that. But generally, you know, I want, okay. what the hell is this doing? Oh, I didn't, I don't think I plugged the tilt sensor in. I did. Tilt sensor's in. This is going to prop pitch. All right. You see, I'm trying to come up. Let me, I'm going to come up with a, just a quick little formula here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. I'm just going to direct tie this into. Here, let's do this really quick. Real quick. I'm just trying to, I want to get this in the air because I need to do this to know if this is going to even work for me. Sensor there, okay. So 
So let's do x times 0.25. So that will take a quarter of any input and use that. So I'm just going to Frankenstein this panel really quick. So WS is my pitch. That's going to go there. And then this is going to go to prop pitch. That's just going to give me a quarter of whatever I do for pitch. And then I can scale it. Again, just trying to get off the water. The, the functional element of this is, is this craft going to work? If I don't have enough engine, I need to, what did I do? 0 0.5, 0 0.5. If I don't have enough engine, I need to fix that early. You know, it could change completely change the way it looks, it completely change the way it functions, I may have to cut into some of the surfaces, I have to do all these things, so I want to figure that out early. Is this even going to work? And then once I, see, I'm also running on one engine. This is a twin engine for a reason, you know. Okay, why? What is going on, man? You guys saw that I had it running fine. It was pitching fine. Now it's being absolutely brutal. All right, WS, let's go to pitch on this propeller here. I don't know why this is so screwy now. Like you saw the first time, I you know I was able to steer it well, but I'm having an issue now. Let's see, 0.5. I'm not going to get old. I'm going to keep putting in 0.5 every time. Is it? Now, if, you know, sometimes, you know, if you start bringing your prop pitch up too early, you can't get started because you're putting too much load on the engine. There we go. So now I have enough. There we go. And it's that easy. Okay. Not bad. So she flies with one engine, so as you can see, we're in good shape here. That really helps us out. We know that this is gonna work, and not only is this gonna work, this is gonna work on one engine. Now remember, I have no gyro in here. This is completely no gyro. Look at how nicely it flies. Hands off, hands off. So one of the things I used to do when I was a flight instructor was take my hands off, let the people show the stability of the airplane, what it's gonna do. And I want to know what the stability of my airplane is going to do. Look at it. Flying beautifully. No hands on there. No issues. I'm going to pitch down. I'm going to roll it. I might, you know, I'm probably going to want a gyro for some of this. Generally rolls a little bit too much. But if I can run no gyro, again, a lot of people, the reason why they're struggling, why they're having issues is their plane is so unstable to start with. And then they expect to put a magic gyro box in there, and it's just going to figure out, it's going to fix everything that you didn't build correctly. Now, I don't say that to be harsh, that people didn't build things correctly. That's why I put out tutorials, is most people aren't going to know how to build things correctly because they don't have a degree in aeronautical science, you know. And this is why, you know, I don't have issues with some of the stuff is because, again, I, I spent years learning how this stuff works, you know, years and thousands of hours flying aircraft, so that's why I know how to do this. So, you know, and that's why I make tutorials is it's expected. So if you go through my aerodynamics tutorial, I go through some of the stuff and why certain things have to be the way they have to be, why you want to have your center of lift where, you know, your center of gravity. And because we don't have a center of lift indicator on here, you have to take things into account like you have a horizontal tail plane in your tail. Well, guess what? That's giving you lift. So your lift isn't right at the center of the wings, it's getting dragged back. So you actually want your center of gravity behind the wing because you have to count for it getting dragged back by that, uh, by that horizontal tail plane on the tail. So this is flying beautifully right off the bat. I'm curious about the speed one engine. Okay, this is awesome, man. This is really good. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm really, I'm pleased with this so far. All right, so I'm gonna do a dial, I'm gonna do a dial. <laughs> I'm going to put a dial in here. So the, I like that P value. Let's actually just get rid of you for now. And I'm gonna grab a linear. You know, the reason why I put those dials upside down, the reason why I don't index them is they're doing very little for me. I don't really care about much of what they're doing. All I want to do is read the number. It's just a, it's a way for me to read the number. That's why I don't bother indexing them. They're all going away anyway. 
All right, so let's go ahead in here. So lately, too, I haven't even been putting a disconnect on that propeller pitch just because it, you know, it, it allows you to trim it well. It allows you to, oh, uh, let's do this here. Let's go into this engine panel here. So what was it? 0.5 was working well for my P value. Let's just jam that in there. That could probably get better tuned and more finely tuned later. But um, right now that is working for me. And so, like I said, I like a 0.2 as my best speed. Um, I've gone through how a propeller works. A lot of people don't understand what load is on a uh, what load is on an engine. You need a certain amount of the engine's power to produce compression to be able to power the engine. And so, if you put too much load on, you're putting too much resistance on. And that's why an engine will stall. Is you're essentially you're not allowing the engine to have enough energy to compress the air, and then it doesn't combust, and then the engine shuts down. And so. You know, a lot of people don't understand that this loading, as you increase the blade on the propeller, it's like getting a bigger paddle in your hands. Now, you, you, you know, you're trying to still paddle that kayak with an enormous paddle. Well, it's very efficient. You might only need one stroke every couple seconds because the paddle is pushing so much water, but you're not going to be strong enough to go as fast as you used to be able to go. And so I like to have it where about 20% on my prop is my best speed. Anything lower than that might give me a little bit more speed, but it's gonna be burning a hellacious amount of fuel because most of the energy is going to rotation. Well, it's not, it's it's like moving a tiny thin little needle of a propeller, of a uh, paddle, super duper fast. You're moving so little water, or this in case air, it's not doing much. But you're expending a huge amount of energy to do very little actual movement of air so you're not moving the vehicle very fast, or you could be, but you're produce you're using a huge amount of energy. Well, in the case of this, it's diesel. That's the energy we're using. And so as you get to you get to kind of a critical propeller pitch. You know, I like to I like to tune mine up so it's around 20%. And so then what we're doing is we're getting the best speed. So let's say we do 200 knots as our best speed. If we go less on propeller pitch, we get slower than 200 knots. If we go more on our propeller pitch, we go slower than 200 knots. That gives us our best speed. All right, and you actually can look in the manuals for uh, complex aircraft, and it'll tell you what propeller pitch is for best speed. And then there is also a propeller pitch for best efficiency. And so when you have a variable pitch propeller, the benefit of that is you can go from best speed when you want best speed and then you can go to best efficiency when you want to save fuel and so that's generally what I'll do is so as we go higher in the number the propeller pitch as you can see the pitch right there it's even stalling on my engine oh, I gotta make sure I don't go under and um, it's even stalling out my engine there because it's putting so much load on again it's it's like you've taken somebody with thin little arms they might be able to move that tiny little needle propeller super fast but then you give them a big, huge paddle, and they can move it barely at all, and that's stalling. You're essentially stalling out a person just like you would an airplane. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do another takeoff. So I'm going to go to about 20. Again, that should be my best speed. I want best speed for takeoff. And the reason is when you're doing takeoffs and landings, you want low pitch, high RPM, and that allows you to make quick engine changes. It's very little load because it has very little pitch. You can see how little pitch it is. So that's like a, a small paddle. Well, whether you have big, strong muscles or you have thin little arms, if you have a tiny little paddle and you're moving a small bit of water, you can easily make speed changes. You can go paddle, 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 or you can go paddle, paddle, paddle. If you have a big, huge uh, paddle, you can pretty much go paddle, paddle, paddle. Well, now try to change that, right? You're going to hit a mountain. You're going to crash into the runway because you're coming down too fast and you try to make a quick change. You can't make a quick change because you don't have the strength in your arms to be able to move that paddle any faster. And, you you know, the it has, you know, we'll go to momentum and all that. But so you want that low pitch, high RPM. It It's very little load on the engine. The engine's being very wasteful. You're burning a ton of fuel to not do much air movement, but... You can make changes quickly. That's why I don't put, um, and I don't want flywheels in, on an airplane. I want the ability to dynamically change the speed of the propeller and change my thrust quickly because 
the difference between you stalling and falling and hitting the ground hard and crashing and making a beautiful butter landing can be very tiny and so you need to be able to make those tiny little changes constantly especially in real life you get a little wind shear you get uh, wind direction changes you really need to like if you watch and um, you can probably find YouTube videos if you watch somebody coming in in a jet doesn't have to be a jet but you know what I mean um, into an air in, into an airport that's very windy has a lot of gusts as wind shear the thrust is going up and down and up and down and it's that experience of constantly making small changes to stay right on the edge when I for example the cap air jet right the cap air jet is modeled to be very realistic it comes in about 120 knots if I get down to about 115 I stall I'll smash into the ground if I go 125, I'm going to float, and I'm going to go way down the runway. And so that is really, in real life, that's how precise it is. You're about five knots above stall speed, you know, and so that's where you want to be. And so you need that engine to be able to quickly change because if your headwind turns into a tailwind with a gust, you very well could be at stall speed. You need to quickly add thrust or else you're going to stall. So let's do another takeoff here. That is my okay. So my, some I screwed something up with the p value. Look at the p value, it's going nuts. What did I screw up with the p value? I screwed something up with this p value here. All right. I thought point five worked for us last time. It, it is really not working for us this time. Okay, I will fix it. We'll hook that back up. You can see my RPS was not stable. If you don't have a stable RPS, you're not having a good time. You know, uh, you know, if you look at a real airplane, as you change the RPS, it's pretty stable. It's not darting around like crazy like mine was there. So let's go 0.5. Probably too high, I'm thinking. Let's go, uh, let's do 0.25. Let's go half of that. The outruns. Usually it's lower than 0.5, so I kind of surprise myself. Alright, so see, it's doing this. That's fine. It's hitting the rev limiter. I'm not worried about it hitting the rev, rev limiter like that. Okay, let's bring it all the way down. But I just wanted, so let me, I'm going to set a number here for this to sit at. Not at the rev limiter. Let's put it that way. Okay, so see how it's sitting stable now? I'm, I set it at 13.3. Or some, probably 14, something like that. See how it's sitting stable? That uh, second digit after the decimal is what's moving. That's that's good. That's what we want. So that's a better p-value. Let's bring it to idle, make sure that it holds and it doesn't. If it's continually dropping, your p-value is too low, and it's just going to, that's why you'll hear your engine either die or stall and restart all the time. As your p-value is too low, you say, hey, man, give me 2.2 RPS. And it can't maintain that, so it goes below it. So right now I'm asking, what am I asking of it? Probably three. I'm asking three of it. And notice it's it's holding 2.3. It needs to stay above two or else it will stall. So let's go ahead and put in the 20% that I want. It's going to stall. That's fine. I need, to, I need to probably increase the idle. Because it's moving a propeller, so it's trying to... It, it has... You know, unlike a unlike a wheel that might be stopped, this is constantly moving its resistor essentially. So I'm gonna try to get up to speed here. There we go. We're up. So one engine again. We're running on one engine. Nice. We're doing. This is gonna be a fast bird, man. Let's see where we're at here. Trying to find my horizon here, naturally. All right, so I'm trying to find my horizon. All right, so there's my horizon. We're doing 65 meters per second. Uh, it's something like two. Let's see what it is. Uh, let's see. It's one. I know. I know what it is off the top of my head. I don't know why I'm doing this. Let me grab my calculator. So it's uh, 65 times uh, 1.943844. So I know that off the top of my head. 126 knots. So that is. So we have one engine running. This is a twin-engine airplane. We're doing 126 knots. 
So I would love to get 200 knots out of this. Again, no gyro, flying beautiful. If the gyro's on there, it's just not doing anything. Ideally, if I can get this to run with no gyro, that is my ideal. I'm just kind of doing maneuvers here. You know, I have no issue tuning that gyro in. Again, a lot of people, who, you know, you'll see it all the time. I see it constantly, and it kind of drives me nuts a little bit. Default gyro's crap. Default gyro's junk. Yeah, sure, there are plenty of gyros out there, and ones people have made that are better. Sure, I get that, but for most people, the stock gyro is fine. You know, the and a lot of the gyros people make make such stiff airplanes that constantly, you know, like I want to let go of this airplane, watch the nose rise. That's what I want. I want this to fly naturally. Now, of course, most people have never flown airplanes, so they don't know what it's supposed to be like, and so they think that, oh yeah, that's crap. You know, it's like, you know, you don't have any flight experience. You don't know what it is. So for me. Which is fine, you know, if somebody, people want an arcade flying experience, that's fine. You know, have the great thing about an open world game like this, oh, jeez, is um, you can have whatever, you, you can play it however you want. But for me personally, I like it to be more realistic. So let's yank this back in. Let's do a twin engine. Um, I also want to tune in the propellers, or not tune in the propellers. I want to see where my propeller values are. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to take air and hook it up to the air here. Fuel to this fuel. Clutch, that's fine. Uh, clutch needs to go to this clutch. Starter needs to go to this starter. And then this is just gonna be my, um, my Frankenstein panel I use for everything. All right, so all I'm going to do here is this is going to invert my propeller. So that's all this is doing. All right, with an inverted propeller, that's going to make the same prop control, just work backwards for the other one. Uh, what am I? I'm grabbing the wrong one, right there. So that will go there. This will go to... Collective. I don't really, I don't think I need to hook the pitch to the other one or the roll. I have plenty of pitch and roll effectiveness here. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook the pitch up to that. I'm going to hook the pitch here. But it needs to be inverted. So, does it? Yeah, it does. So, I'm not going to worry about it right now. Does it, though? I don't think it does. If this goes down, this one will go up. They're backwards. Yeah, it's backwards. It should work. Let me test it. This could end with us dive bombing into the water, but what else is new? So what I what I will also do is, so I add a, a fin system underneath on my seaplanes, and part of that is to help it plane and get, so planing is a technical term where you're, you know, you see here, so as the water hits this surface, it's going to force it down. Well, if it, you know, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So as you hit this and the water's forced down, well, it forces the plane up. And so instead of the water trudge, instead of the plane trudging through the water, it's skimming on the top of it. So it's like trying to push something through the water or try to skim it on top. It's easier to skim. You can get faster, less drag. You can go faster. You can get up to rotation speed and you can get, get off the water. And also, I don't want it diving down like that, so I'll also fix uh, that, put in some fins there that when it's in the water, they will go positive, try to get it out of the water. That will help us so we don't dive in like that. Let's try point 0.2 this time. We had point 0.25 last time. Let's go up to 20. Let's start taxiing out. Oh. Why is the back one not running? Oh, uh, yeah, I know why. Okay, back one's running. It's just I didn't gear up the propellers yet. So do a 9 to 1. 9 to 1 is a really high ratio. That's so for every one rotation of the engine, we're getting nine rotations of the propeller. That gives us really good fuel efficiency. That's just generally what I'll run with. You know, if I have to tune it later, which I don't, you just saw we had a really successful flight already. 
then um, I can, but I, you know, we'll see. So 20, I don't know if 20 is my best speed. I want to be taken off with my best uh, pitch. Now, in real life, the way it works is you would go, your prop levers would go full forward. Now, full forward would be 20. That would be your best, you don't want to go under than that. So what I'll do is, so point if, if point 0.2 is my best speed, point 0.2 will be all the way forward. Anything more efficient than that will come back. So this should have a lot more thrust now. Nice, look at that, beautiful. So when I get in the air too, I don't want that uh, propeller doing much of my pitch work here. So let's go uh, level. So I'm just visually looking at the horizon. That's what an artificial horizon does, is just simulate it. Oh, that's interesting. So we're at the same speed that we were, uh, we're slower than we're... What is the propeller doing in the back now? What are you doing, sir? Why? So my rear engine is not running. So it's, it's giving me a lot of drag because the propeller is sticking out. That's why we're going slower, actually. Why is that engine off? All right, let's bring it back in. For some reason, my rear engine's off. I want to get that rear engine running. So let's see what's up with this sucker. Uh, let's see. Let's just do this. This is going to be a better way to do it. Copy you. For now, I'm just going to do this. And then when the panel is completed, I'll just really port it over. But right now, it's, it's going to get p-value. p-value will go to p-value. Starter to starter. Because it, it might have died, and the starter doesn't know how to restart because it's reading the other one. So it's actually better to do it this way anyway. But uh, I was being lazy. So it needs to actually read the RPS, and then it needs to read the engine. Seat. Okay, so hopefully this sets us straight here. Just being lazy trying to run it off that one panel. I like having an individual engine panel sometimes. It just makes it easier to kind of configure them the way I want. You know, if I so like I need to put that prop inversion in there, I can do that in the panel. So that's kind of why I do that. That's yeah, running better now. You know, probably the that engine was probably being fuel starved or something, and it wasn't perfectly because that one has a different has a different super, you know it has a supercharger, but it's it's supercharging differently potentially than the other one because it's it's taking its air in from a different place, so it might have choked it out, and not given enough fuel. There we go. That's interesting too, I'm getting uh, smoke. Huh. I stalled on my engine. This one's st it's not this one, the rear one's stalling out. Huh. That's interesting, the rear engine's stalling out for some reason. Okay. Alright. Let's see what the hell's going on here. Wonder if it's fuel. See, I, it's hard for me to see these. See, like this. Okay, so this is a, this one's air intake, right here. This is this one's air intake here. So let's check it. So this one has a longer run in the air intake, but I don't think that should really matter. Let's see. This one's running here. That's torque. Okay, that's fine. Let's see. Make sure this is re. Oh, come on, get out of there, you. This one should be fluid out. Fluid out. So that means this one's fluid in. So the air is coming in this ram here. It's going up here. It's going through. It's going down to the engine there. It's coming over here. Make sure that's getting my air. That is air. That is air. Okay, fuel's going right here. So. Does this not like that it's taking the fuel like this? 
<laughs> I do not know. Does it not like that it's taking air like this, or fuel like this? Let's check all the exhaust ports here. So I have exhaust there. I'm just doing dual exhausts for the fun of it. I'll do ex I'll do exhaust deletion too in a second to check out because the front's running fine. Front is running nicely. The rear is having an issue here. Have a little bit of a coronary there. So that's good there. That's there. You know, it's running fine. So, you know, the cats sometimes choke it, but it's, you know, I don't think it's that. This one has a much shorter run on its air. And part of the reason is, part of the reason is, let's see. This one by four kind of needs that there. Hmm. I'm trying to think the best way to do this. I'm trying to diagnose this in a reasonably easy way. Let's do this. So I'm going to see if there's an air problem. And so I'm going to kind of try to systematically figure this out. You know, is it an air? Is it an exhaust? What kind of issue am I having here? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the supercharger and I'm going to push it here. And it could, you know, that's the only real element of this engine that's different. The feed for the, the feed is a little bit different for the fuel, but not by much. The exhaust is pretty much identical. The engines themselves are pretty much identical. So let's try this. Let's go. So that's going to be fluid out. That's my blower, my supercharger right there. All right. And then I need to punch the hole here. So I didn't check to see if I can even punch this hole right here. I, I can. Okay. Right there. All right. And let's grab, because I'm wondering if this is having issues breathing. Make sure that's forward. That one's forward. Okay, so now I just put a different air system in here. Let's see if this will run for me. So if this still has issues, it's probably not air. I'll move on. I'll, I'll do exhaust deletion. That gives me the least back pressure for exhaust. Did I hook up the p-value? Let me check. Because it wouldn't run at all if the, if the p value well if the p value was set to five like it was, let me check it. Yep, it, this one's running the proper p value off of that. Let me make sure everything's connected again. Okay, that's all connected up. That is p value there. That is RPS for the rear engine. Composite for the rear engine. That's good. Let's try this. So if it's if it was an air issue, this should fix it. Uh, make sure that everything merged. And I don't have it laying on the ground. All right. So let's let's test this. If it works, it was that air runs probably bad. If it doesn't, exhaust is my next test. So I'm making sure the propellers also turn the right direction, is it? I can't tell with the... Yeah. I'm shutting them down. I want to make sure the propellers turn the right direction. I can't tell, frankly. So the propeller is rotating right. I have to visually look at this to see if the propellers turn the correct direction. I'm going to go full prop. Makes it easier to see. Yeah, that's the right direction. Yep, that's the right direction. Okay. That would be a, a, a bite. That's the right bite. Okay. Let's try it. Okay, let's go to 20-ish. Yeah, I'd like to test out what my best speed is here so I know what I'm taking off as.
see, one of them smoke. Okay, it smokes right before it dies. But it's only smoking on the upper stage, which is the front. It's, you know what, I bet, I bet it's a fuel issue. I bet it's a fuel issue because the... I bet that front engine's stealing the fuel from the rear engine. I bet that's what it is. Let's let's play with that. So I have this fuel coming up here like this, and then it's teeing out. I think it's when it goes in here, it's stealing it from the rear engine. So so what we can do is test this. Let's go like this. Let's detach the front starter. Let's see if I can if if that fixes it right. We know it's a fuel issue, and I will find a way to pump two tanks. Is what I'll do. Okay, no issues so far, which we haven't been having. We have it once we get in the air. So what's likely is if that was working. Okay, so it's dead. It's dead. Engine's dead. So it's not the fuel. Okay, so fuel was working. Not fuel, because this is coming up and that's burning in fuel perfectly fine. That's all good. Okay, so it's not that. Alright, so let's go back and we'll undo that. So it is not the fuel. As soon as I go full throttle, the rear engine just does not is not happy. So the, come on, that would really screw it up. So that's back there. And then, so let's do exhaust deletion. This is going to give me the best chance to try to fix the, if it's an exhaust problem, this is going to show that it's exhaust. So we'll take exhaust pipes. We'll put, I don't need to, but I'm put two on there. It doesn't hurt it. And then what I want to do is I want to grab an air manifold. And I'm going to delete the exhaust by going like this. Now, that's going to give me max exhaust flow because essentially the air goes into the the um, air manifold. The, the exhaust goes into the air manifold and it's just completely deleted. And then you know it's just completely uh, deleted, and so you don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, so let's try this now. Pitch, that's fine. That's collective. So we have an inverse collective. That should just be inverse. That is. That works. Okay. All right, let's try this. So this will tell me 3131313131. Oh, you suck. If I click on that rocket booster, it screws me up. Let me see if it floats funny now. Yeah, see? All it takes is that one click on the rocket booster, and I screw myself up here. So I have to go back and fix that. Awesome. So that one little click just cost me a bunch of time here. That's fine. All right, save this here. So I need to save save it back anyways. So is that twin C-plane? Twin C-plane. I'll get back to you guys when I fix it. All right, so I went in the XML. That just reduced it down to about, you know, approximately zero instead of being at the negative 1,200, which is what it needs to float properly. So fix that. All right, so what did I do? What did I change here? I did exhaust deletion last. Okay, so the exhaust is now deleted on the rear engine. So this will tell me if, it's a, if, if it is an exhaust problem, if this works now. So. Always smokes out that first one right before this one dies. I'm curious. You know what? I bet it, I'm. I'm wondering. Look, that's definitely moving slower than the front one. What the hell's going on here? We, well, what's the speed? We're, no, we're moving a lot faster. We're moving a hell of a lot faster now. We're going at a really good speed now. So I don't know what it is here. We trim a little bit. We're doing 93 meters per second, so it'll be uh, 93 times 1.943844. 
So that's 180 knots. So the the Dornier Sea Star, which this is inspired by, does 180 knots. So this is right on the money. So just under 200 knots. That's where I want it. Nice, good. So this again. This is max speed too. We're gonna pull the prop back. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're, we're, we think it's max speed. Let's test it here. So I'm trying to get stable here. So it doesn't need to be perfect. So that's, that's uh, gonna be hard to do here with the dump. So that's about 94. Let's go ahead and add, say, five on there. Does it go down or does it go up? It goes up. Okay, we also dived like crazy. So let's try to level out. So I'm trying to find my max speed. That's where the bottom value of the prop should be. So we're doing about 101 at 25. Let's go higher. Let's go five more. Do I go slower? I do go slower. Okay, so let's see. Try 26. So let's get a little bit accurate here. I The sensitivity is probably too much. Let's try 27. Do we beat 101? We do not. So let's go back to 25. 25 is our, max, is our best speed. Let's go a little bit slower. Let's try if I can... Tap it once and not have it. 23. Does this go faster? It does not. So we just figured out the our best speed prop pitch. So our best speed prop pitch is 0.25. So that one's so I want that to be our bottom. So where are you at there, guy? Oh come on, get out of there. Uh, let's see. So it'd be 0.25. And then I want to grab this. So we know it's an exhaust problem now. And also Let's do this. What's that? That's airspeed. That's RPS on one side. Let's, uh, I need something else here. Let's grab this really quick. Uh, I didn't mean to put two, but I did. Whatever. Um, this one is going to be RPS for the back. I just want to make sure that I'm reading the right RPS on that one, that that one's behaving itself. So you notice I put the throttle backwards. You want your... Let me see, uh, sensitivity, let's go down on sensitivity to on a 10%. Start value should be 0.25. No, start value should be zero. Hmm. I wanna be able to feather this prop, that's the issue. I wanna be, uh, see in real life feathering the prop, it actually goes, it goes perfectly forward so that it will match the airflow and the prop can stop in the air so you can start stop one engine and not have the propeller keep turning can't do that in game unfortunately so i want to be able to go negative as well so yeah I'm, i want to be able to go negative as well so we just know that information so that's what we're going to be taking off at let's go ahead and Point two. I just want to check these, make sure that we have good stable RPS on both uh, on both front and back. With having two like this uh, in line, it's going to allow us to. It will allow us to shut one engine down and only operate on one engine if we wanted to. Which they do that when they're taxiing a lot to save fuel. Or you're parked or something, you want the engine running. but you want... So it looks like they're moving the same speed now. Both engines. What's my speed now? Yeah, 100. So that's, that's right in the money. Okay, so that's our best speed. Wow, I need to trim a little bit. So that's our best speed. And our best speed is the propeller pitch which gives us the best speed so what I'll actually do is when I I'm gonna do feather so it will feather on start and then it will so it'll go zero which again not a real feather but it will go zero on start and then I'll be able to put these in reverse especially a seaplane I want to be able to put it in reverse and I'll change the sensitivity of this I want to get this flying as close to how I want it to fly without doing the gyro, and then if I don't need the gyro, I'm not going to use it. If I need the gyro, I'm going to use it. So.
The other thing I can do is I can make my own little gyro just for the propeller pitch there. The When I say pitch, the pitch component of the propeller, which is helping me stay up in the water and to counteract that thrust, the center of thrust being above the center of gravity. Let's go ahead and I want to check some things really quick here. So that's 14.76. That is 14.74. That's a little bit lower than I like. Let's see, 0.25. So that's going higher now. That should give us more speed, but not by much, as you can see. Let's go, uh, I don't know, 0.4. So we're at full, we're at full throttle, which is, uh, I'm setting it to 20. Now let's go up and down a little bit. So see the jitter? I don't want the jitter, so let's go back to 0.2. So I want to set this p-value here really quick. So let's try not to get jitter. So we have 12. Let's go down a little bit. Nice. That's good. That sets it nicely. And then so what I can do to make sure I get high enough propeller or a high enough RPS is just increase the cap on the RPS. So right now, see, I, I'm telling it, hey, give me 20. It's only giving me 15. If I keep increasing the p-value, it's going to keep going closer and closer to 20, but it's going to overreact. What I can do instead is instead of having a cap of 20 to a cap of 30, it's never going to get to 30, but it might get to 20. So that's good right there. So let's go ahead and let's do that really quick. And we'll, we'll finish up in a minute here. But this is, this is we're moving really a lightning speed here. Uh, you know, I did some off offline, just did a bunch of decorating stuff. Um, you know, I'll quickly show you some of that. But you can see the decorations in here, just seating mostly accidentally painting things I don't mean to but um, kind of got this set up move the door so I have some space behind here I want to put a jump seat I, w I need to be able to this this allows me to get out of the seat and get out uh, make the door controller work so it's so that's good to find out so it's an exhaust problem that was that was probable with putting two cats on two cats is excessive um, I can try this later. Uh, I'll try to get the exhaust. Worst case, I'll, I'll just make it cosmetic. But um, let's see, what else do I want to do here? So I do want this uh, minimum at 0.25. The, what I'm going to do is when it starts, it. Um, I'll see if they should be able to start with 0.25 in there. Uh, what I want to do is have a feather button. When I press the feather button, it will bring it down to zero. And then when I do reverse, it will put them in reverse. And it, it's just prop pitch. You know, you can still throttle them up and down. But that's, especially on water, if I have that 0.25 in, it's going to gently push itself forward. And so the ability to go into beta, which is essentially zero, and then reverse uh, will let me, you know, move in all axes. All right, so what do I want to do? Uh, I want to go in here. And I want to let's say let's let's just call this a good number of point point two five for the p value. And then here, my up down counter it goes to a maximum value of twenty for twenty RPS. I'm gonna change that to thirty. And I'm gonna do come over here and do the same. Again, this, this is the annoying thing is when I set it up like this, I have to do both, so I'd like to get one panel to kind of be where I want it, and then I don't have to do it twice every time. All right, spawn that. All right, let's go. So I don't need to do that anymore. Six, start them up. So now they're start. They take a little bit longer to start, but they're not a problem because they have a little bit of prop pitch. See how we're moving at idle? Throttle's all the way back. I can't keep us from moving. That's why you want to have a beta so you can put it in essentially zero prop pitch, and that will keep us from going forward. You actually have to worry about this in real airplanes, uh, real turboprops. I don't have a lot of turboprop experience. If I say anything incorrectly, it's because I don't have any actual turboprop experience. But... Um, you know, you will with idle thrust. Sometimes you'll it will roll you, and you have to either hold the brakes. Well, if you if you flatten out the props, you, they're they're just spinning the props. They're actually not pushing you forward. So, all right, let's get moving here. And we're up, full throttle. 
little bit of RPS jitter there at one point. Alright, so what are we doing? So we're doing about we're doing about 101, that's I need to trim. I also like to make the plane so you actually have to trim it like real life. You know, you every time you do a pitch or power setting, you have to trim. There's 101. Okay, so we're we're at its maximum so we're at maximum load. Let's put it that way. So you notice I had it set at twenty and it was going to about fifteen something. I have it set to 30 now, it's going to 15 something. So the reason why I can't get it to go any higher is because we're at max load. So the amount of load that two five blade propellers is um, is putting onto this engine. The engine, uh, now th think of it this way, right? You have a big, you have somebody trying to move a kayak and they have one thin paddle. Of course they can move it fast, right? Now put two thin paddles, one in each hand. They, they can't they might be doing be more efficient but they can't move them as fast now have them put five thin paddles in their hand they're gonna go very they're gonna uh, they're, it's gonna essentially reduce their RPS their rotations per second because they're they're moving more air and that's the same thing as these are five blades you know if I went down to two blades I could get a higher RPS if I went down yeah if I, if I went to a bigger motor I could get higher RPS higher RPS is going to create more heat, going to burn more fuel. So this is more efficient. Again, I only want about 200 knots. So we're really close to that. At 100 meters per second, we're talking 194 knots. That's close enough for me. And so, okay, so we're at max speed. Now let's go to max efficiency. Max efficiency. Now we might not be able to get all the way to 100% to prop. That's fine. We're moving five-bladed props. Like I said, remember that. Five-bladed props, that's a lot to move. Okay, so we're good. So look at our RPS. We're down to 4.8 RPS. Let me get us leveled out here. Again, anytime you do a pitch power setting, oh, I can't see my horizon anymore. Okay, I'm trying to get us level. I want to. I need to get us level in marker speed. So we're doing 64 meters per second. That's still 120 knots. So let's quickly do the math here. Some people are interested in this. We'll end up the episode on a little bit of math here. So... All right, so here's a spreadsheet, and I've kind of set this up here so you guys can see it. And so I have prop setting. My prop settings are max speed, 0.25. I have max efficiency of 100. My RPS, at max speed, with a prop setting of 0.25, my engine will go up to 15.14 RPS. That's the maximum RPS I can do at that prop setting. Max efficiency. Now, if I go to a prop setting of 100%, the most my engine can turn, the highest the RPS, is 4.8. When I'm at max speed, I, 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 you know, max speed should give me the fastest speed. I go 100 meters per second. At max efficiency, I only go 63 meters per second. Now, this is why you want a variable pitch propeller in, a, in an aircraft, and why pretty much every commercial aircraft that that operates for profit uses variable pitch propellers i can't you know there might be some you know of course you have um flight schools that need fixed pitch propellers for private pilot training but now i'm talking commercial airlines why when they have propellers do they do variable pitch propellers and this is why there's no way in hell we're taken off or landing safely with 100% prop. And I'll tell you why. Look at that RPS value, right? So my engine, I can set a minimum value of three. That's my idle. If I go to max efficiency, right, that is a three to a 4.8 range. That's, that gives me a grand total of 1.8 RPS to play with. That's my variability. I can I can go from three or I can go a maximum of 4.8. I, I can't, I don't have enough variability. It's not going to be safe for me to be able to take off or land there. I'm not going to be able to change my speed quickly. I'm not going to be able to change it by a lot. Um, that's still, you know, the likelihood that I can, I can do that. The envelope is too narrow for me to safely be able to land and take off. So that is not going to work, right? My so I want to take off at max speed. This gives me the highest change of speed, the most dynamism, the most dynamic ability of my engine. So by doing a variable pitch propeller, when you change your your blade pitch, you're able to choose max speed or max efficiency. Now let's talk about how max efficiency works. All right. 
And we'll talk about it kind of in game terms, but it also works out to be pretty realistic here. So I'll talk about some of these numbers here I did. So RPS. So our max RPS is 15.14. Our, our minimum at max efficiency with, so this is full throttle. Full throttle at 0.25 is 15.14. Uh, full throttle at 100% is 4.8. All right. So 4.8 is three is 31% of this. Makes sense, right? That's 15. That's about five. So one and three. So about 31%. So we take 100, we subtract 31. That's a 69% loss in RPS. So we've reduced our RPS 69%. All right. Now let's talk about our speed, though. Max speed is 100, right? This this makes the math easy. Our max efficiency speed is 63, right? So we're going 63% of the speed. So if we do 100 minus 63, we get a 37% loss. All right. So what's happening here is, let's talk about what, what does RPS really mean in the terms of the game? Well, what does RPS equal? RPS equals fuel and heat. That's what the game is. That's pretty much what the game is, and that's pretty realistic in real life what that means. RPS equals fuel and heat. All right, so the higher the RPS, the more fuel we burn, which costs us money. The higher the RPS, the more heat we create, which means we have to take care of it. So we either have to buy expensive components that we're going to have to put into our career game, or we're going to have to come up with elaborate systems that take up a lot of space and ruin the way things look. You, you know, I'll, I'll, I haven't done the heat, the cooling system, but I, I will bet you this, that this will, thing will be no problem to cool. All right. And so you're creating heat and you're also creating uh, uh, use of fuel, which costs you money, right? So when I go from maximum speed setting to maximum efficiency setting, I am, I am losing 69% of my fuel costs, right? So really simple. For every $100 of fuel I, sp I spend here, right, I'm only spending 31 cents over here. So let me actually put it here. So this is $100 for, um, I'm sorry, that's not the right way to put them here. Uh, I'm trying to figure the best way to put them here. So so this is going to cost me max speed. It's going to cost me $100. For every $100 I spend at max speed, I'm only spending $0.31 cents here. Uh, I'm sorry, $31. I'll get this right eventually here, guys. Thirty-one dollar. Ah, oh, you my, my mind. All right. So, if I cruise around at max speed, I'm spending a hundred dollars. If I cruise around at max efficiency, I'm only spending thirty-one dollars. Now, that's your personal choice. If it's incredibly important for you to get there really fast, again, like the Concorde, right? The Concorde was very fast, but it was very expensive. And so, people who valued their time and put a very high cost on their time said, "Hey, go fast, man. I'm happy to spend the money." But if you care about the money, especially if you're a business, right? You know, like I said, most commercial airlines have these variable pitch propellers, and this is why they can spend $31. Now, let's talk about the actual difference here. So I lose 69% of my costs in heat and fuel. If I was losing 69% of my speed, it would be a one-to-one -one linear relationship. It wouldn't matter, right? You, yeah, it's going to cost me less money, but it's going to take me more time. I might as well go fast, right? But it's not like that. We're losing 69% of our fuel costs, but we're only losing 37% of our speed. We're not losing as much speed as we're losing fuel costs and money. That's why that's why commercial aircraft will off, operate with variable pitch propellers. When you need max speed, like for takeoff and landing, you use it. But as soon as you get up and you're safe and you're up in the air and everything is stable, you start reducing your, you start increasing your propeller pitch, which reduces your RPM, which reduces your fuel costs. That means that if we're going 100 meters per second, that's going to be 360 kilometers per hour. So just put that there, 360 kph. All right. Now what is this? So 63. That is 226. 226 kilometers per hour. So it's going to take us, so let's say our distance is, is 360 kilometers. It's going to take us one hour to get there. All right. So it's going to take us one hour to get that 360 kilometers. Now, how long is it going to take us to get here? Hour and 35 minutes So to get the same distance. So again, we're going airport to airport. 
airports are 360 kilometers per hour or 360 kilometers um, apart. It's going to take us one hour at max speed. It's going to take us one hour and 35 minutes. So again, that makes about sense, right? Only 37% there, 35 minutes there. That makes sense. Um, th this is 1.59. Um, you get to take 1.59 times as long to get there. So it's going to take us an hour and 35 minutes. And so let's look at the cost, though. The cost is what's going to really matter for us. So if we look there, I'm trying to think of an easy way to do this here. So we are, let's say, let's just come up with a number here. So let's say it's going to cost us $100 to go there. Okay. And so it's going to take us longer here. It's going to take us um, 35 extra minutes, but we're 69% we're, we're, uh, more efficient on our fuel burn. So let's say $100. So for it's going to be 31 cents, right, for every – or $31 for every $100. So it's $31 per hour, right? So this is $100 per hour. This is $31 per hour. So we need to do – let's see. So it'd be one point, I think it's 1.59 times 0 0.31. What's that? So this here is going to cost us $49. So we can go from airport to airport at max speed. It's going to cost us $100. Or we can go to airport to airport at max efficiency. It's going to cost us $49. Or because we have a variable pitch propeller, we can go anywhere in between. And so because of that variability, we can set – Okay, well, you know what? I, I really want to save a lot of money. There's no rush. I'm in no rush, right? Let's say you're, tr you know, you're, you've, you've already done the. Let's say you're going out to the rescue, right? And you want to get these guys before they die. It's imperative you get these guys before they die. You really don't want them to die out there on the mission. So you go max speed. You burn a lot of fuel going out there, but you go out there for max speed. You go pick up the people. The people are now safe. There's no rush, right? You want to maximize profit. So what do you do? You go max efficiency on the way back. So for every every 360 kilometers, I'm spending $100 over here. I'm spending $49 here. So that is is about half, but um, I'm not actually going half the speed. I'm doing better than half. I'm going 63% of the speed, but I'm only burning 31% of the fuel burn. And... Uh, I don't know if any of this math's right. <laughs> I'm looking at it now. It's kind of it look it look a little weird to me, but no, that makes sense. It makes perfect sense to me. Um, yeah, that's because it's going to take us longer, so we have to add that on. So there's not a, a direct. So the math is right. I'm just doubting it. The there's not a direct linear relationship between the efficiencies and the speeds. So yeah, you'll get there faster, but look, we're spending less than half the amount of money to do it at 63% of the speed. If we want to go at 100% of the speed, we're going to burn we're going to cost $100. If we go at 63% of our speed, it's going to cost us half. So we're not going 50. If this was 50, you could say, yeah. You know, if I go at half speed, it costs me half the money. I can go faster and it costs me, you know, the same essentially, but I just get there quicker. This it's actually better to go to max efficiency. And so this is kind of how variable pitch propellers work now. Some airplanes have fixed pitch propellers, and what they have to do is this is dangerous. We can't land with this, right? That's too small of a window. So let's let's come up with a window that will work. So probably let's say 10 RPS. So uh, let's say 10 RPS is where we'd be at. So maybe we say okay, I don't know, uh, prop setting a 0.5, right? So if we set a prop setting a 0.5, well, our speed's going to go down, and our fuel and our um, costs are going to go down a little bit. But we're not going to be as good on takeoff and landing, and we're not going to be as good at cruise. So it's much better to have a variable pitch propeller. So I hope, hope this was interesting to you guys more than anything. Uh, but you can kind of see how it's not a direct linear relationship. We, do, we lose a lot more fuel burn, but we don't lose as much speed. And so it's actually pretty efficient to run this way. So hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.